Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast is number 1,376. The topic is nutrition and the title is a long one. <laughs> this might be the longest title we've ever had, but I'm not sure how to shorten it so everybody actually knows what it's for. Uh, but the title is Adjusting Calorie and Protein Intake from Where You Are to Where You Want to Be. So, um, hopefully that's descriptive enough that it catches everybody who needs it. I felt like if I made it any uh, shorter, people might bypass it not knowing exactly what this podcast was about. So, I uh, one of my favorite aspects of my job is I get to train other trainers. Actually, half of my clients are trainers, so that makes it super fun. One of my clients is a online nutrition coach, and I help them with training so that way they can you know, look fit and sell themselves well in the way that they look. And then we also talk about nutrition a lot. So I do have a master's in nutrition. I've been doing nutrition with clients for, you know, 20 years. This is what I do. <laughs> so we talk about things and she ran into a little bit of a kind of a hurdle here. And what was happening was she was trying to figure out how to adjust her calorie and protein targets for her client when her client's current habits uh, kind of weren't weren't normal. They were kind of scattered all over the place and they weren't even close to where they needed to be. So she was just kind of feeling kind of frustrated. The client was also feeling frustrated because it felt like they were being asked to do too much. So we were just kind of talking about what do you do in that situation. I then had a conversation with another trainer I helped and this kind of came up again and we talked that through and she thought it was helpful for her client. So I was like, hey, what the heck, you know, might as well make a podcast here. <laughs> so the client reported and it's okay if you don't remember all these numbers. I'm just going to give you the numbers, and then we'll talk through averages and stuff. But just to give you some context of, of what's happening here is the trainer had the client report their weekly food to them. The client had already been tracking food, uh, which was kind of interesting because the numbers are all over the place. And if the person was tracking, good Lord, who knows what would have happened if they weren't tracking. <laughs> so, uh, But the client reported calorie numbers for the week of 1861, 1455. 1203, so 1,203, then 2,020, then 1751, 1355, and 1634. So the calories are kind of all over the place. The average was 611, but they actually varied with one of the days being over 400 calories above that and another day being over 400 calories below that. And then the worst thing was the average wasn't even within the targeted range. <laughs> so their target range was supposed to be 1,800 to 2,000 calories. Their average was only 1,611. They actually missed their target on six of the seven days. So they overshot on one of the days. They got it right kind of pretty good in the middle there on one of the days, and every other day was too low. So the client was saying that eating that, that much was too hard for them because they had previously come from a place of, of chronically under eating to the point where they said they were never really hungry, yet they were only eating like 13, 1,400 calories a day, which was definitely too low. Their body had just adjusted to living off of that, which is why they had very little muscle mass. They were soft and pudgy, and they didn't really look the way they wanted, even though they weren't, quote-unquote, eating a lot of food. The problem wasn't that they were eating too much. It was that they actually weren't eating enough. So the client is saying that they're uh, eating too much. They felt kind of frustrated. The trainer calculated the calories, you know, based on body weight, their goal, their lifestyle, and the ca the trainer believes that 1,800 to 2,000 is correct. Well, what do you do here? The client's unhappy because they feel like they can't meet those numbers. The trainer's unhappy because the client isn't meeting those numbers. <laughs> so it's like, dang it, you know, what's going on? So the trainer calculated the client's calories by multiplying the, the body weight of the client times 15. Now, 15, I'm going to talk more about this here in a second. But body weight times 15, that, that's on the higher end of what we would consider like a normal type of range. But it was because the client is very, very active. They're up on their feet. They're active all the time. And the client wants to, they do want to lose fat, but they, they also want to get a lot stronger. They want to build muscle tissue. So they don't really want to lose weight as much as they want to actually improve their body composition. So the trainer thought going under uh, 15, like under body weight times 15, would impair the strength and muscle development. But by having the client be consistent with body weight times 15, it would still allow for fat loss as the client's caloric intake would be more consistent than they had been before. And they'd have a greater amount of protein than they had before, which would control and limit the amount of carbs and fats. So... The trainer's thoughts were to keep the calories and protein high to fuel strength and muscle building. 
and then rely on caloric consistency and balancing of the macronutrients to create fat loss. That's actually great. That's accurate. That's 100% exactly what you should do. The problem is the client isn't ready for it. <laughs> so, so the trainer's thoughts are correct when you look at calculations and what is correct on paper. But then you have to actually work with a human being. And what we learn, like, you know, in labs and what you learn in books, there it's it's always going to have some modification or some tweak needed, made, um, needed to be made uh, whenever you work with actual human beings. So... What we're kind of talking through now is the the client's current body weight is 125 pounds. Now the client's only 4'11", so that's that's of note because that's shorter than usual. So uh, now, so they're 125, they're 4'11". They feel soft and pudgy, but they don't consider themselves really overweight. They just want to lose some of the pudge, build some muscle, get a little stronger. Now, if you've listened to our podcast number. 1,232. It's a nutrition podcast titled Start Here. You'll hear all of the different kind of uh, calories of like calculations, protein calculations, kind of giving you an idea of where you should start with your calories, where you should start with your protein. So for example, the general ballpark of calories is body weight times 11 to body weight times 15, somewhere in that range. 11 is if you're kind of sedentary, you don't really do much. 13 would be kind of if you have average active lifestyle. And then 15 is if you're pretty active. Now, I've talked about this before. But I have some clients who they eat body weight times 17 or body weight times 18, and they look great and amazing because they're super crazy active. They, they train a lot. So one of them is an apple farmer, I think up in New York, and he does a crap ton of work all the time and he trains uh, regularly like three, four, five times a week. Other clients I have who are personal trainers, they have really high calorie counts because they're up and active on their feet all day, plus they're training themselves, you know, five, six days a week, so they have a really high calorie count. So the, the body weight times 11 to body weight times 15, that's just a general ballpark range. You should be somewhere in there. So that gives us an idea of where the person should be, but somewhere between body weight times 11 and body weight times 15. 11 is if you're not very active, you don't really exercise a lot. 13 is if you're semi-active, normal activity, you exercise, you know, two, three times a week. Body weight times 15 is if you have a pretty active job, you exercise a little more regularly. Then protein should be body weight times 0.6 to one gram, like to one. That'll give you the grams uh, that they should consume. So if a person weighs 125 pounds, they would, the low end of their calories, I mean the low end of their protein would be 75 grams. So it'd be body weight times 0.6, which is 75. Then body weight times one is 125. So this client's protein intake should be somewhere between 75 to 125. Now, 0.6 is if you don't really do really any muscle damaging activities or have any kind of muscle damaging aspects in your lifestyle. It's just the lowest end of the range for kind of the lower end of muscle demand people uh, in lifestyles. 0.8 would be kind of somewhere in the middle. And then one gram, uh, one uh, is like people who lift weights pretty often. They beat up their muscle tissues a lot and they're very active. So that's why there's a range for both calories and protein is, you know, if you don't really do a lot, you are on the lower end of the range. If you do a little bit more, you're towards the higher end of the range. So the trainer wants the client around 1,900 calories, which is body weight times 15, and around 125 grams of protein, which is body weight times one for protein. But the client's current habits are an average of only 1,600 calories. And their reported protein average, as we went through their numbers, was only 68 grams. So that's much lower than the 75. Well, not much lower, but that's lower than the 75 and a hell of a lot lower than the 125. So their current habits, if we break it down into calculations, would be body weight times 13 for the calories. So that's what their 1611 roughly uh, equates to is body weight times 13, but it's widely varied. It's not even very actually consistent at that. Their protein intake is actually uh, equivalent to body weight times 0.5. So they're not, they're not within that 0.6 to 1 gram range. So they're body weight times 0.5, but again, that was wildly varied. There were really high days and really low days. So what can we do? What do we do when where you are is different from where you want to be? The client feels, and you might feel this, is too much pressure to make too big of a change too quickly. A lot of twos there. <laughs> too big of a change too quickly. But the trainer, or the numbers that you calculate, or whatever the diet program you might be following, uh, tells you what would be best for best results. 
So it's like, okay, here I am, here that is. Holy freaking crap, how do I get there? <laughs> how do I get there without feeling like a loser and feeling like a failure all the time? So one method is just to adjust in increments. And that would be like if the person is at body weight times 13, but the correct target is body weight times 15, well, we want to get consistent at body weight times 13 first. Then we go to body weight times 14 and have that be consistent. And then we go to body weight times 15 and have that be consistent. Same thing with protein. If they're at, you know, body weight times 0.5, get that consistent first, and then go to 0.6, then 0.7, then 0.8, 0.9, all the way up to 1. So make the adjustments slowly in small increments. But you also want to make them when you feel like you're ready that you can accomplish the next stage. So typically what I have people do is try to be consistent within their targets about 10 out of 14 days. Now, something that can help here is if we say, okay, body weight times 15 is 1,900 calories. No one is going to eat exactly 1,900 calories every day. That's it's impossible. You're going to get to like 1899 and feel like a loser because you're one off. Or you're going to go to 1905 and feel like you're a loser because you're five over. Uh, one calorie and five calories makes zero difference whatsoever. So I typically will do for calories just a simple, easy equation is I just um, subtract and add 100. So they're, if their target is 1900, we actually have them aim between 1800 to 2000. If their target was 1700, we'd have them aim between 1600 to 1800. Okay. Protein, I have them do plus or minus 10. So if the goal is 125, we'd be aimed to be between 115 to 135. Now, those are ranges, and if somebody's one or two over, you know, in protein, they're 10, 15, 20 over in calories. Those aren't really that big of deals. So you want to give them a range or give yourself a range, and then you want to be within those ranges 10 out of 14 days. No one is perfect, so we're sure as hell not going to aim for 14 out of 14 because that's just not going to happen. 10 out of 14, is it's doable. It allows for a couple mistakes here and there, but it shows overall that you have enough nutritional control to be near those ranges or within those ranges most of the time. So 10 out of 14 days isn't, isn't perfect, but it's doable. So if you can get it right for 10 out of 14 days, you're then ready to take on the next step and probably be able to get that right as well. So if you struggle to adjust from where you are to where you are supposed to be, adjust in stages. So if you currently eat body weight times 8, and somebody's telling you, you have to eat body weight times 11, you know, otherwise you're never going to lose fat. And you're like, oh my gosh, that feels like way too much food. That scares the hell out of me. Well, don't go all the way from body weight times 8 in calories to body weight times 11. Go from body weight times 8 to body weight times 9, times 10, and then times 11. Or if you're overeating, if you're at body weight times 20, <laughs> and you need to back that down to 15, well, then you go to body weight times 19, 18, 17, 16, then 15. And the same thing with protein. You know, if you're at 0.5, go to 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1. If you're overeating protein, maybe you're at 1.3, back it down to 1.2, 1.1. So wherever you're at, take it in stages, adjust in stages. Give yourself time to learn the adjustments. Don't move until you've gotten it right 10 out of 14 days. And that allows then at each stage, you're kind of learning what it takes to meet those numbers. You're learning how to make it a lifestyle, how to make it sustainable. And if you're worried, like, well, you know, if I'm supposed to be at X, you know, number XYZ, I'm not going to have any progress to like make that number. It's going to take forever if I do it every 14 days. But what you want to remember is, is you will see progress. Or maybe not remember, just it's, it's good for you to hear this, be told this, that this is true, is at each stage you will see progress. You don't have to be at the finish line of a race to see that you've made progress in the race, right? <laughs> so if I'm at the starting line and I start running, I know I'm closer to the finish line. I can see that. I can feel that. And that's the same thing when you make a nutritional adjustments like this. Is there might be the optimal numbers, and at the optimal numbers, you'll make the optimal change in terms of progress. But even in the steps towards that, you will see and you will feel progress. So you can make progress in these stages, 
And by taking it in stages, you're not going to feel overwhelmed. You're not going to feel like a failure as much. <laughs> um, and you'll be able to do it as a more sustainable lifestyle. You're going to learn what it takes to eat you know, the healthier or more correct breakfasts. You're going to learn what it takes to eat more often throughout the day even though you're too busy to eat. You're going to learn what it takes to meet the numbers and have it be a lifestyle. So this would be the recommendation for how to adjust calorie and protein intake from where you are to where you want to be is calculate what your averages are right now for you know body weight times what gives you how many calories you're consuming now how much protein you're consuming now whatever that number is body weight times whatever that number then just take that number in stages until you get to the number you're supposed to be if you don't know where you're supposed to be that's what podcast 1232 nutrition podcast title start here will tell you about okay so I hope this was helpful. I hope it gave you kind of an idea of what to do, uh, kind of a sy systematic way. So for all the trainers I work with, you can apply this to all of your clients now rather than having to memorize like specific numbers. So if you're an individual, you can now use this to figure it out specifically for you. So whoever listens to this podcast, whatever your calorie numbers uh, are, you now can use this formula, use this method to get yourself on track. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, I'm always available. Our email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. I really appreciate everybody listening to the podcast, and I hope that you get everything you need from it. If you ever have questions or any clarity that you might need, uh, just email me, brutalironjim at gmail.com. I love hearing from people, and I love that people will send me stuff. And sometimes it's like, I don't even know if this will make a good podcast, but I've always wondered X, Y, Z. Whatever it is, if you're wondering things, let me know. It might make a great podcast. You never know. So just email me at brutalironjim at gmail.com. Well, thank you for listening to the podcast. If you like the podcast, please consider sharing it. The more people you share it with, the more people can help. So that's a big, big uh, kind of bonus to everybody you know if you share it with them. So I really appreciate it when you do that. Also, thank you to the patrons of the podcast, the people who financially support the podcast. The podcast is well over $1,000 a year. I give an hour to it every day. I'd love to keep it free and love to keep it like on a day-by-day -day basis so thank you to the people who make the financial donations so that's somewhat reasonable to do <laughs> so thank you you can make donations on our website at www.brutalironjim.com we have options for one-time donation monthly donation yearly donation if you give anything we all thank you so that way we can continue to learn so thank you very much. If you like the information we share in a podcast, so you can find more from us on our social media channels on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and at YouTube under the name Brutal Iron Gym. If you have any questions, feedback, suggestions, anything that you want to know, let us know at our email at brutalirongym at gmail.com. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.